Well, hello, glorious people. Good afternoon. It is it is uh, two fourteen in the afternoon, and uh, yeah, we did headed back over here to the plan. I stopped in Amarillo last night. I got tired, so I just stopped there at that new Toot and Totem truck stop. It's a pretty nice truck stop. And uh, slept pretty good. <sighs> Got a good night's rest after yesterday. That debacle with the uh, that water load that they did not want to load me after six o'clock. So we just decided just to deadhead back instead of waiting around for that load the next day because that load is uh, isn't worth waiting for a day. We made it back over here to the plant today. You know, I, I went to sleep. I got into Amarillo about 1.30. So I was probably asleep by 2, but I slept. I turned off the truck, and it was about 50. Anywhere from 45 to 50 degrees. I turned off the truck, and I slept so good. You know, I slept for probably, I woke up about 11.30. So I got, I got over eight hours sleep undisturbed and that rarely happens <laughs> so I enjoyed that I feel a little bit rested now but we get to lo and behold you know we're supposed to pick up this load here at the plant on the 7th you know it's the 5th right now but the load is ready it is ready so we get to take this load and go take a couple days off because if it's ready on the 7th I don't have to leave till the 7th so I'm going to the house for a couple of days which is nice I'll take it because so I have stuff I need to do and I I would like to get I need to get my truck in to uh, get these uh, wheel bearings tightened up on the tent on the uh, drives I've already had one tightened up where I had that wheel seal replaced but I need to do the other three so I don't wear out these tires. Make sure these tires don't get worn out, you know. Little little bit of preventive maintenance, which is uh, always good to know. And I know on this truck, this is a Peterbilt. Depends on what, uh, what year you have, really. I mean, with mine, it has an inside and outside nut that, you know, that the inside nut uh, screws onto a one of those uh, pressure cones, you know, they have those cones on there to keep from over tightening the bearings. But I know mine specifically are are for uh, 300 foot pounds of torque for each nut, the inside and outside nut. So I think I'm going to go park it at the Petro and uh, get them to retuck three. Uh, retort three of my Wilbury nuts, the inside and outside, to 300 foot pounds. Three hundred foot pounds of torque, and uh, overshot that just a little bit. I need to pull up one time. And actually, I could probably just back up and straighten it up. But back up. I'm already, my wheels are already turned so I can straighten it up. So I just need to come back with it this way after I straighten it. Leave a little bit of room so I don't, you know, put myself in a bind lowering this gear, the uh, drive gears. So it's a beautiful day. It's a little bit windy, not too bad. And uh, temperatures in the 70s, low 70s. So it's a pretty nice day. I hope to get to the house and uh, you know start my couple days, start my couple days off, and uh, we will continue on the on with this load. Now I may have to get fuel in this reefer that I'm picking up and uh, sign in to get my wheel bearings torqued. But I can leave my number. They can give me a call. To, uh, when to go in the shop, I'll just let them know that I'm going to be away from the truck stop and 
let me know about an hour beforehand before I go into the shop. And we'll get that done. And uh, that's all I have to do. And that's all I have to do with the truck as far as uh, that's all really I have time to do. And uh, for now, yeah, there's other stuff I need to do. They can, they can wait. They can probably wait. But I might go by Peterbilt to get me some uh, um, all those bars on the axles. What are they? The, the tension bars. I need to order me two more of those because with this supply chain screw up that's going on, you know, I may have to pre-order it. And it might take you know, a while to get in, but I need to get those replaced. So I think I'll go ahead and do that. Go ahead and order those. Go by Peterbilt and order those. Stabilizer bars, that's what they're called. They go on top of your axle on these trucks, on these big trucks. And uh, go ahead and get those ordered, but, you know, enjoy, enjoy the rest of my day off. I know I have stuff to do at the house, but, you know, I can take my time doing that. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to unhook from this trailer and go find that other one. All right. We found the trailer. Got hooked up to it. And I spent 10 minutes jacking down these uh, landing gears. Because that uh, yard service guy, I mean, they go through yard service guys here pretty often. And the new ones always always leave the trailer too high this thing was about a foot above my fifth wheel and i got 24 and a half tires on i got the big tires the big wheels so he added up there a ways i spent 10 minutes jacking that down that was a pain in the rear so now line won't come off on me turning a corner that's a lot better see how it locked in place there that should be all right sure it's not against that airline and uh, what we will do people is uh, release our trailer brake supplier to the trailer turn on our trailer lights auxiliary lights and hazards check the lights
We'll do a walk around. I got fuel at the TA. It is the cheapest place to get it around here. I'm going to bump my tires again while I'm looking at it. I always recheck my bobtail lights when I have my lights on. Check the fuel of the reefer. Sometimes you have to wipe down this glass uh, thing on there to be able to see it. And I don't even see the uh, gauge on that thing. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I imagine it's completely full. Because usually if you can't see it, it's full. I know it can't be empty because it's running. Not unless the gauge doesn't work on this thing, but I imagine it's full. I'll uh, get a stick and check that tank and see where the level's at. I have a fuel stick, a wooden fuel stick in my toolbox side of my, underneath my bed. Then we'll go around here, bump the tires, make sure they're aired up. This one has no Henderson unit on it, so just a note to self on that. I love the Henderson units because they'll actually keep a tire that has a nail in it or a bolt. They'll actually keep it inflated going down the road. So we're checking our lights, our hazards. Everything's on. It looks good. I don't know if you guys can see it. You might be able to check our latch on top. They secured the doors correctly. Check our seal. And we do have a seal number on here we need to compare, but I don't have my paperwork yet, so. I could write it down, but I'm filming right now. I can write it down here in a little bit. Mud flaps look good on the trailer. Lights look good in the back. We got our clearance lights look good. The skirts look like they're secure. We don't see anything dangling from them hazards over here and lights look good there's a guy I saw at a, that water place down there in Dallas he actually got a load hold on let me talk to him oh you are you're not over here I don't know if you caught all that. That was old Bill. We 
we saw him down there at a hydration source down there in Dallas yesterday. And I don't know if you heard him, but he didn't get a load either because remember I told you that place loads heavy. They had him lo loaded over 45,000. He said he couldn't take it, and they said, well, we'll just take it off. He said, fine, go ahead. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't wait. I'm glad I just deadheaded. But anyways, let me get this, uh, let me get some of this paperwork done. I don't know, you don't want to hear the clicks and things on the, on the computer. Tandem slid and uh, was able to pull out around Bill over there. So I thought that was pretty funny and pretty interesting, rather, that uh, both of us show up at that receiver and have problems because they refuse to cooperate and they wouldn't take a pallet off of his load. They wouldn't take a pallet off of his load to uh, you know, make it legal. Which is basically what they're trying to do is force people to run eagle, illegal. They probably get paid by the pound at that place for what they load and unload. So they want you to take, they probably, now I'm just guesstimating why they do this. It's not for a fact, but I know a, a lot of places get paid by the pound of what they load and unload, so that might be the reason, but trying to force people to run illegal like that is a bunch of crap. You know, they need to send an email or do whatever they need to do, because I know that receiver personally, they're nice people, the Essence Bottling Company, and uh, I'm sure they would, they would order it with one less pallet, you know, they just tell them to take off the pallet if they would contact them. Put that place down there, hydration source in Dallas, Texas. Uh, keep that in mind. They're on the north, uh, northeast side of Dallas. They refuse to cooperate with you to run, run legal. And, uh, so I'm glad I did leave last night. But at any rate, we're here to, uh, and we got our load, it's ready, and we're going to go to the house, take a couple days off. we got to check out first. All right, good morning and afternoon, people. Depends on what part of the world you're from. Um, we took a couple nights off, and uh, we're going to get back at it. Today's the 7th. And I hurt my back a couple of days ago. I don't know. I, there wasn't one incident that I that I remember that I actually, you know, actually hurt it. But my lower back's been really sore. I did go to the chiropractor. That helped a little bit, but I think I need another adjustment. So I did. I was not able to come back up here and put the truck in the shop for you know to tighten the wheel bearings. On those three drives i was going to do that while i was off but i just i just couldn't get up you know i mean i wasn't i wasn't laid up in the bed but it just seemed like anytime i got up it was such a chore you know just walking around so and it still it still hurts pretty good but it's slowing us down a little bit but we're not going to let it defeat us because we have got to get this load down there by tonight we have a drop in the morning in Houston and then a reload in Houston. So we have got to get down the road. It did slow us down this morning. You know, and plus the family stuff, you know, you gotta take care of the family before you leave. And so got that done and now we are able to put our stuff back in the truck. Warm the truck up, then a pre-trip. So now we are ready to hit the road. And it feels like a week since I've been on the road, but I can't tell you if I'm excited or not because of this freaking back pain. So, but you know, hopefully we'll get over it. I'll try to visit the chiropractor next time I come into town. See if he can do another adjustment. We're going to try to get out of this Petro and get on with it, but this, uh, 
This road here is pretty busy. So we take a minute or two. People exiting off the highway. Trucks kind of trying to uh, exit also. Basically, have to make your own lane. Oh my gosh! Oh god! Oh, that was rough. That was not nice on the back. I guess he thinks he needs some more room, but he doesn't need any more room to turn. He could turn it from that right hand lane. I've made that turn before. Uh, but we've got a full load, so. And I don't think the wind's going to cooperate with us. I think it's coming from the south, but we'll start rolling and see what we get on fuel mileage. But yeah, that's the update for now. I mean, we're just going to head down to Houston and, uh, try to get down there. We may have to park at the receiver because I'm leaving a little bit late to be able to find the spot. So yeah, we may have to park 